Hey everybody, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I'm joined here by Thermal Mike from Thermal Take and he is going to be going through a virtual CES 2022 showcase. The actual physical showcase was canceled and a lot of things didn't go right with CES this year, but luckily Mike has agreed to join us here on the channel and share his time and his knowledge and go through some of the great new products coming out from Thermal Take this year. So go ahead, Mike, uh, take it away and I'll pepper you with questions uh, as we go. No, 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 absolutely. Hey, thanks so much for uh, spending some time with us as well so we can show you some of the newer products. I mean, being able to do a virtual meeting like this is, hey, the next best thing that we could do with the unfortunate uh, you know, cancellations with CES and everything. I got my classic little CES banner back here from what we usually have with our nice, big, glorious booth and all the beautiful PCs we get to build each year. So that's always a lot of fun. Yeah, you do a, um, you do a do great job with that. Oh, I appreciate that. It's, you know, it's, it's not just their job, man. It, it's, it's more than, it, I don't even think about it as work. It's so much fun to get to build a PC. I have a couple here today to uh, show you guys as well as some other products um, that I hope you guys will, you know, take in, give us maybe some feedback on a couple of upcoming products. I got some like concept stuff that's in the works as well as some stuff that's going to be coming out here for Q1 uh, for 2022 here from Thermaltake. So you ready to get started? All right. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over here. Uh, to give you guys a little bit better uh, perspective here on some of our bigger announcements, I guess you would say, because this case is definitely not small by any means. This is our new uh, Tower 500 uh, case here by Thermaltake. Uh, really awesome. I like the Tower series. It's probably my favorite of all the cases I've ever gotten to deal with, and I've touched a lot of them here. Uh, from the Tower 900 that we initially came out with, um, and then more recently to the Tower 100, the little mini... ITX uh, toy box thing, man. That thing is so, so cool. Uh, the Tower 500 comes in as a more of a mid style, but <clears throat> pretty big presentation wise. Um, it does take up a good amount of real estate on your desk, but it doesn't definitely lack in presentation at all. When you look at this aquarium style type of uh, inner workings that the case offers with the three glass panels, which I've removed here just to show you guys more of the internals, um, but it does include uh, glass panels and even on the one side, we are still doing the glass and perforation combo for both of the side panels there to just have a little bit more uh, airflow options with it. Granted, there's no fan support directly like on the side for this. So I wouldn't say it's more on the higher end extreme water cooling side or application for this, but supporting uh, two 240 radiator options, both in the top and the front down here. And I've even removed the, the panel because normally there's a, there's a little great panel that's here on the side. So I took that off in the front there so you can see I have my two tough fans there with my 240 radiator. And then I have another one up here on the top just so that I could have some fun with the liquid cooling. But it also makes a great option for AIO placement as well. And do you have any top or bottom to top airflow? I can't tell what the bottom of the chassis looks like. Any fan placement positions there? So on the bottom, it, there is no fan placement for it. Mostly when you, um, on the left side of the case here is where the power supply goes. So if I can kind of spin it around, you can kind of see the power supply is off center. So that more or less takes up a good amount of space. And we do give extra room for the larger power supplies that are definitely out in the market. Um, but I still have room to do tubing, as you can see right here a, a little bit, or at least I try to be able to show you, you can see this cool little bend that I did shooting it right between the reservoir and the radiator just to have some fun with it. And, uh, you know, see the capabilities of the case uh, that I would like to uh, demo here with this. But yeah, with uh, a 240 down there, I really have fan mounting here in the front. I could fit in three fans, I think, on the bottom. I haven't directly tried it, but I definitely can't put a 360 there. The case isn't even as wide for a 360 to give some type of, uh, you know, comparison there as far as, it does look big, but as far as width-wise goes, a 360 radiator is still more or less uh, wider than the case itself. And then, and then, so I've done this cool tubing with this. It was a lot of fun getting to split up and do dual rads. I, I got a mock-up uh, GPU uh, water block here. Uh, one of the things that's nice about the Tower 500 is that the motherboard's rotated 90 degrees. So that gives you basically a natural, uh, vertical GPU mounting, no riser cable needed. It plugs directly into the motherboard. And then as you can see here on how it's mounted, it does reduce the, the stress that you would get, you know, on the PCI Express slot as well as the graphics card. But it is nice to see these motherboard companies 
starting to do these metal upgrades and some other things. And they're thinking about that stuff. So um, it's great to have like those kinds of combinations. And it gives a different presentation, you know, with the CPU basically kind of in the middle right versus, you know, your standard upper left. And where would all of those cables, your all your I.O. come out and where do you have access? Somewhere on the top or is it kind of the back? Where would we see the cables coming out for your video, USB, all that stuff? So all of my cables that I have, we do have a back panel here that's quite extensive as far as different options in the back. This gives me both uh, a big ventilation panel, as you can see, with a, with a filter. And it's just like one of those magnetic filters that we have here on the back. So like stuff like that can come off. Um, this doesn't support like a quad fan stack. It was something I looked at. I was like, oh, wait, can I put four fans on there? Um, the holes are a little too big for that. I was kind of bummed because <laughs> I love that airflow, man. I got to tell you. But we do offer uh, multiple airflow options. There's two fan mounts that they have in the back saying that that fan being as an exhaust out the back does assist with, uh, with basically helping in a negative chamber type of environment. At least that is what my headquarters is uh, positioning as far as how we did our TT Expo. Um, I alternated to do an intake on the bottom versus doing straight exhaust out all ports. Um, so that way, at least I had some intake coming in through the bottom. I got exhaust out through the top and then the fans out through the back. But I haven't had too much of a chance to do testing, more or less just kind of set up something uh, to demo here to show you guys today. It, we haven't had it too long, if you can understand, as far as getting the case. And uh, it's a pretty fresh little build. It's more of on the demo side of things, though. But we'll definitely have some more information because I'm kind of curious, too, on the testing with this, with it being a little bit larger. The Tower 100 definitely could get hot because it's a small box. I mean, people were putting some high-end stuff in there, like 3090s and stuff. And we get it. We get it. It wasn't necessarily marketed for stuff like that, but we can understand people do still want to put whatever they can in there. Uh, so more information will come. Definitely get this out in the media as well. Uh, see what other people come up with. And what are you thinking about availability and price on this one? So pricing on this is going to be coming around $200 MSRP. Um, I, it could change, but ballpark there for you. And uh, Q1 is when we're expected to have this come out. Um, we'll have it available in the black as well as the Snow Edition models. That's great. Yeah, I'm excited to get the the white one now and then do like a different kind of little color combo on it. But it, it gives a nice little elegant look to it. Um, you know, you get Type-C and USB 3, just to mention on the top. It has that Tower 900 top style where all the connections go through the top. It's got a access port, you know, there and everything. And then one of the things unique about uh, the Tower 500 is that if you're not doing extreme LCS, and this is one thing I always like to mention, is that if you are just wanting to have a nice presentation, you want to go AIO cooling, we do have these nice little cover plates that actually go on both sides. I removed the one so that I could put the reservoir there, but I left the other one over here to kind of cover up the cables so you don't see all that from the power side, power supply down below and or other things. So it gives you a little stash spot, I guess. And then, of course, on the back and these sides, there's these little pockets here that are great for running the cables up and down. And because that part is not glass and it's that perforation, it discreetly hides it fairly well for the cable nightmares that you can expect with lots of RGB. Sure, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Any other questions or anything particular on the case before we move forward? Nope, that's it on this one. Right on. Okay, give me one second here to just reset, and I'll pull the other case out, and we'll talk about it. Thank you for waiting. Sure thing. I'm excited right. to hear more about this case. I know the divider series was something you came out with last year. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was a, a last year idea. You know, they wanted to uh, divide some things up here in the company, apparently. And we did a variety of different models of these. Uh, both with glass and with RGB. Um, but the one thing was, was that it had a big divide to it, you know, and it was split panels. Like you see here on the back panel of this case with the divider uh, 550 Ultra, you got uh, basically a two panel design. You got perforation here for side radiator mounting. But the thing was that we did on the other side was that we did do a combination of both glass and metal. And this kind of came down like a little triangle thing, a little Triforce mm -hmm. action that we had going on. <clears throat> Is that going to be the same type of panel you have on this one? You have it removed right now, but what, what will the stock side panels look like here? So the stock side panel, well, first and foremost, with the Divider 550 Ultra, we do take that uh, divider style that we've had, of course, to it, but we've made some, uh, I would say, more or less necessarily upgrades to the case and uh, with it being ultra we wanted to do something that's going to fit more for the market so i do like that with this we're going with a full one piece tempered glass even though we could have done like a split 
glass and glass like we've done before with the Divider 500 series, because we did do an all glass or glass and metal combo. It you kind of had the choice to pick. It seems like the you divider know? is no longer divided. Uh, more or less, only on the one side. <laughs> But I do like how the divided uh, part on the other side is there, uh, that perforation and then that panel as far as how it goes on. It's still a pretty cool concept. I really liked it for that side of the things. I just wasn't as uh, fond, at least for us here in our region, about covering up my beautiful graphics card. But some people may or may not have wanted that. So we try to do a lot of different things for everybody globally. Um, I think with the Divider 550 Ultra coming in with that full glass panel, Still giving the same type of internal mid-tower compatibility, supporting a 240 radiator on the side next to the motherboard, which is becoming a more and more popular thing for us here with side-mounted uh, radiator support on the motherboard side. I I'm not seeing that a lot out in the market, um, as well as being able to have options to mount on the top, of course. So you got your two favorite ways to go for AIO. And what's um, the capacity on the roof there for our AIO? So on the roof, it's going to be a 240, 280. That it will support. I wish it would do a 360 on the top, but it's more of a mid tower versus mm. a full tower application because we usually do 360s on the top for full tower applications. And can you do them simultaneously? I, it looks like you've got clearance. Oh, yeah. To, yeah. Yeah, I would say you definitely got some room there. The thing that I like too with that is that if you had to put, um, because of the fact that the top extends on the outside of the frame, the fans mount on that outside. There's a bracket that's in here that's removable too. So it's really nice. You can take that out, put it on the table, radiator sandwich. I like that fans do that and then put the whole thing back in there versus having to figure it out while it's in the case yeah that's um, that's really builder friendly i like that feature i, I do too <laughs> as far as when putting these things together same thing now with this a little bit different uh they're going with this five and a quarter uh type of screen thing now the screen is very similar to our flow rc product where we have the memory cover mm -hmm. and it as you can see here it looks like we're expanding on some screen ideas with our new ultra series and this now this is going to be not necessarily a touch screen but a monitor that can do real-time monitoring with uh every you know for example you have this set up you have an aio in here this is our 240 ultra aio and then having that set up in there you'll get all the features of our ttrgb plus 2.0 software and then get all that real-time monitoring stuff so you could put up there you could do uh jpegs or gifs as well but it also does like you know cpu temp and all that sure. and it's just a nice little look at a glance kind of thing with a cool little screen in the front. I, and I can see us doing a lot more of this. I think that that's, a, that's actually what drew me to this case. I like the look of the case generally, but I really feel like that's like the next iteration. You know, a lot of the a AIOs are coming with the LCD screen and you can peer inside your case and see temp, you can see CPU usage, but sort of, it seems like the next step is, hey, put it on the outside of the case so that you can actually see it without, you know, looking around or underneath your desk or whatever, depending on where your your case is and which way it's facing. You know, a lot of people might have that chassis on the other side of their desk and they can't see their all in one. Right. But they can see the front. And so you're using basically the same technology, same interface, same software that you've used with your your RAM cover. I'm familiar with that. I haven't showcased mm -hmm. it on the channel, but you're using the same software. So you didn't have to reinvent the wheel with the software for this front panel display. Yeah, no, it was more or less just like an add-on that we have with all the other stuff that we've already been doing with all the ring fan software, uh, the AIO software that's already integrated because we've already been doing the AIOs with the screens on them. So that was already in place. And this was just basically, I mean, you consider it like it's a 480 by 480 pixel screen and uh, the memory is just a 128 by 480 pixel screen. So mm -hmm. it's basically size wise and everything is just proportionate to it. And we've been adding new stuff in with the software as well, where we get like, uh, we have a lot of templates now. We've added, I think, almost 20 different options, a little free to download kind of things on our website nice. for both the AIO. We got mobile phone wallpapers as well as desktop wallpapers too. So you can kind of get that whole collection there uh, right off our website, as well as do your own. Yeah. Um, I think that's another cool thing too. It's more or less open source. You can put your own you know, picture of your dog in there or something yeah. if you want. You know what I, I mean? I, I, I really... I think that's really cool. I think it's fun. Some people might not dig it, but I, I, I'm, I'm a sucker for that. So I appreciate that. And and is that like a modular piece, like that actual display? You said it's a 5.25 inch. It, 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 can you take that in and out or replace it with something, or is that pretty much built into the case? 
I'm so glad that you asked that because I actually have another product here that I wanted to kind of slip in in regards to it. But yeah, I'm, when I said five and a quarter wasn't necessarily on the size of the screen, but just where that classic five and a quarter like optical drive bay area is, I was like, oh, okay, okay, I see what they're trying to do here. You know, they were trying to like have a purpose for that area that no longer more or less exists now for whatever reason. But take a, I want to show you this just, uh, I thought this would be a nice little add on here, uh, give you a little bit more of a close up. So, this is also another new product that we have coming out. This is a clip-on version, meaning that it's going to attach to DDR4 or DDR5 type modules, and it's our Pacific R2 Ultra. It's basically just giving you a screen that you can clip over your memory. It, regardless if it's RGB or not, you might want to just have a screen there, for example, or if you have our AIO already, this is a nice little option. And one thing, too, for my modder friends, the screen is actually separate from the little clip-on thing. So if you buy this, you're just getting a little screen bar that more or less uh, glues or like double-sided tapes onto that. So you can put that screen anywhere with this fun little product. So oh, cool. I'm kind of excited to see what some of our modder friends will do with this and where they may put it because uh, it gives you some nice universal uh, options with that. And then not to uh, just talk about AIOs only, but this is our first DIY LCS block that's going to be offering a screen on it as well. And you can see the G and the quarters are in a different placement. And uh, this is our Pacific MX2 Ultra. So this product right here is another screen uh, type yeah. of application with us kicking off this Ultra series. That's I mean, a great idea. We, we've been talking plus for a long time. The Ring Plus, the TTRGB Plus software, 1.0, 2.0, you know, plus plus. So it's definitely nice to uh, see an Ultra Series come into the market with this. Uh, this is definitely probably some of our first steps here with Ultra, and you can expect a lot more from us here coming out. We'll probably have some fun things in the summer uh, around Computex time to announce to add on. So it's like a whole new product line, the Ultra line, you say? Seems so. Yeah. Definitely seems so. Uh, we'll have to see how far it goes. Um, but yeah, it's a nice warm welcome, something fresh for the new year. Great. Well, this case looks fantastic, and it looks like um, it – from what I'm seeing on the video, it's a pretty pretty flat black, Is it, or is it glossy? I can't quite tell. And do you have a white version coming out? So as far as uh, this one goes, it's our standard black that we normally use with our coating, mm -hmm. uh, very similar to like the same coating we used on the other divider cases. Um, uh, Snow Editions are definitely uh, in plan for it. I unfortunately don't have too much, rele uh, most of my release date stuff's kind of like Q1 right. uh, for a lot of this and everything. Um, but it, you know, it's going to be something we'll definitely have more info out once it gets a little bit closer, shipping times and everything with everything going on. Yeah. Uh, it can be really kind of hard to predict you a exactly. time for it. No, I, but I we'll it. definitely be letting people know, and, you know, once it's available. And how about the fans that it comes with? What, is this going to include any out of the box? A absolutely. Um, I'm not sure on our final plans as far as what we're going to do with fans, at least for here in the U.S., because sometimes we do do our own unique SKUs and different fan combinations that fit more for our region. Mm -hmm. um, I could see us doing an ARGB version, for example, that would have like three ARGB fans in the front with a standard black uh, fan in the back and just, you know, integrated case control. But with it being ultra and that software, we might go a different way because that's not the ARGB side. That's our TTRGB plus side. So, or it's our plus ultra side. I don't know. We're going to have to figure that one out, um, you know, going forward. But I yeah. think it's a lot of what this whole your mod, your way kind of thing is that we're really trying to pitch here. It's, you know, it's your case, your way, your cooling, your way, your RGB, your way. Mm -hmm. And I think we're really going to expand on this a lot. Your screens, your way. I mean, it's it's pretty endless here for us. And I'm really excited to uh, talk more about it once we get some more stuff in the market. You know, a lot yeah. of stuff's been kind of dry. Great. That front panel looks beautiful. The, the whole thing, the glass, the RGB, and the screen, it all blends together really nicely. Yeah, no, thanks. I appreciate the feedback yeah. on that. Yeah, we definitely love glass here. We are also doing some airflow options too, which I like, because I mean, I definitely think that glass in its presentation has been something everybody has just enjoyed for several years, uh, most recently. And I think people are starting to want more of a balance, airflow I think that, and right. glass. I, I, so. I, I think it's definitely shifting back a little bit the other direction. And I'm 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 just looking at this case and thinking you could put a mesh panel on there potentially, you know, mm -hmm. and still keep the screen and still see the RGB a little bit, you know, through the mesh. Um, I don't know. That's not in the works yet. But does it seem to you that this pa front panel could be replaced with something that's mesh? We actually do have some other SKUs out. I apologize, I don't have that here, but we do have another one that has like a little T logo, like the TT logo I have right behind me on the wall. Mm -hmm. 
it's a little single T logo and it's tiled all the way down oh. as like a ventilation panel as basically an alternative to the glass, which is something I'm really excited for because now we're just offering both sides of the fence. You know, people that want the glass or people that want the more the airflow. Oh. Um, I definitely like the airflow side, especially for uh, the front. Because I get plenty of glass, I think, on the side. But that's just me, right? Mm -hmm. It's your mod your way. <laughs> right. So there will be a 550 Ultra with that panel? Um, it's not going to be considered the 550 Ultra. I apologize about that. But other divider series, oh, the okay. air uh, series that we're doing, because we're doing basically uh, multiple versions of that, right. um, as far as some stuff that we've been kind of sneaking out there uh, between since, like, the last time we talked. Great. Okay. Okay. So, you know, we've been talking about a lot of cooling and everything. I got something really cool to show you. Um, let me go ahead and get this set up. I actually have two products here. I know uh, one product you wanted to see, but I don't. Uh, I, I wanted to. I wanted to sneak this one in here because that's what I like to do. Throw it at um, me. We have. This is a new product, but it's an old product. Um, is a is a fun way to kind of explain it. So we have here, of course, this is our ring. Uh, Ring Plus Trio fan. So this is a 120 millimeter fan. It's got rings on both sides with an LED uh, fan in the middle. So it's basically got three rings, hence the Ring Trio yeah. name. Now, the one thing that we have uh, been talking about here at Thermal Take and something that I deal with all the time as a builder is that when I'm doing push-pull configurations, I'm always usually getting stuck staring at this right here, right? You get the frame and everything like that that you got to look at. So we've been always asking, like, hey, how can I get this on the other side? And one idea which came up was, of course, you know, talking about, well, hey, can you reverse the fan and make it spin backwards kind of thing to, you know, mimic the, uh, the opposite way. And we're like, well, you know, maybe there's a different way to do it. Um, we were coming out with this new product. This is called the Ring uh, 12 uh, Transform. And as you can see right here, this basically is uh, a different blade fan uh, rotation. Um, at least I hope you can see that in here from the picture. And one of the cool things that's always been uh, really popular about a lot of our product, especially with our Ring Plus, is that with these being hydraulic ball bearings, these things remove really easily, being able to remove this and have just the frame exposed. I know my modern friends out there love the fact that you can do this, but I think we definitely now have some fun little options to be able to offer a Ring transform where not only are we going to be beefing up the fan to 2000 rpm but we are looking to offer interchangeable fan blades or multiple products where the product itself will still be able to run in the same direction as a push pull so i see that beautiful fan front on both sides and still have the airflow going through and maintaining that 2000 rpm either way It might be something that you can't necessarily see here. I, I apologize if I can't get it close enough, but the, the angle of the blade oh, is yeah, actually yeah. Now I different. See it. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me, um, one sec. Let me see if I can, if I get my other camera down in here a little bit closer and then I can bring this right up to you. So here's like our, what our standard blade would look like on our ring trio. And then looking at this concept blade that I have, you can kind of see the depth of the blade. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. No, it's, so it's the, the, blade, can... the, the blade's in reverse. So the blade's in reverse. The motor goes the same way. And we're going to be looking to offer multiple products of these. So that way you can still have that nice front fish fan, uh, the front face of the fan uh, in a push-pull configuration. So that's a, that's a cool little new product that we have going out uh, here soon. Um, I don't have too much info on it, but it's something neat to show what we're working on. Uh, not just with like new products, but uh, what we've been doing with our current existing products too to, you know, more or less, uh, you know, take them to the next level is what we like to say. Now, speaking of going to the next level, I have something really cool here to show you. Now, this is brand new here as well as far as what we were talking about. This is our new Tough Fan RGB fans now these are very different than what you would expect from us with it's rgb not, so you know what I, I i'm gonna be honest so you know i've featured these on my channel and have been recommending these um you know this is a fantastic fan and one of the things i always said to folks was that there's no fan that performs at this level with rgb yet and so i was really curious how thermal take would when i saw the name list that i said what is this possibly going to look like because one of the things that makes this fan so effective is that hub design 
And I thought, well, are you going to put the right. RGB in there? Are you going to put a ring around? And if what you're showing me here, I had not, I had not envisioned. So this is our, <clears throat> of course, tough fan uh, that we've been coming out with with that Gen 2 uh, hydraulic ball bear, uh, that hydraulic bearing. So with our tough fan and with our Ring Plus series, we wanted to more or less, of course, RGB it out. And I think we've done something pretty unique here. And I can't tell you uh, how much fun it's going to be to see what we get to do with the software on this, especially um, as I can kind of plug this in and I give you. I'm a excited basic to see what this demo. is going to look like when. I can't to give you a basic demo here of the yeah. fans. So as the fans are spinning up, these are 2,000 RPM fans. They run super quiet thanks to the bearing that we have with the Gen 2 on this. And then once the RGB comes alive, it's really going to change a lot, I think for what people are going to be looking at with new RGB ideas. Like, how do you do RGB in a different way? Uh, we've basically more or less kind of converted our iconic circle ring style design that we've been doing and took the circle to the outer edges to make a square. But at the same time, I mean, this to me looks like it could be cat ears next to or Doritos chips. You got some fun little things. You stack these up together, they look like speakers to me because the inner fans are not lit up. Or man, this looks like a DJ table. I'm really excited to see what some people could do with this. I wish I had more of the same size. Right. I got I, 140 and a 140 and that's it. I, think, I need two of the same to set up the, the DJ booth and I'm ready to go. <laughs> this I'm already seeing this, you know, in the front of a case, for example, or on an or on a radiator. You stack those next to each other, two or three. And right. it's going to make like a wall of light. It's going to be a totally different, yeah. It's you know what a I'm really saying? cool effect. And I have not seen that from anybody else. And, and, and this is really neat too, because I'm excited to see what our software team can do as far as everything's always just kind of rotated right, right, right. in a circle. Why can't we do a sweeping motion? Why All can't we the go way left up and down, right? right. Up and down, mm -hmm. you know, Karate Kid style, baby. I'm super excited what we could come up with this. Um, and what software options? I mean, you have corners now. Now we can highlight corners, for example, where it's this corner, that corner, interchange them. I mean, bro, this is Simon Says right here. When you think about <laughs> it, does, that's, there's that's so old many cool things with this. That I, is really I'm really school. excited for it. I, I think that that looks, it is something totally new. And I, I think it's fantastic. It gives people a, a completely different option from what's out there on the market right now. And it's got good performance too, oh, because yeah. the thing, the thing that we've always, uh, you know, is voltage, and with with the way stuff has changed and how it's improved with you know five volt RGB and everything, um, and looking at how we've done stuff in the past. I mean, ring trios took a lot of power. Ring quads took even more. The ring quads run forty eight LEDs, so a lot of that stuff maxed out for what you could do off of a single like uh, you know like twelve volt line. These are twenty four LEDs as far as what we have so far in this concept. And um, I don't have too much info on that more at this time as far as price and availability. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm ex super excited about this. And I know we're going to make a huge amount of noise. Um, I'm going to be bugging our software team a lot about which ways we can go with the, you know what I mean, you, and do all this stuff. And you, and we need your guys' feedback. What do you, what do you guys think yeah. we should do with this? What fun ideas should we add to our software? Can you just put that in front of that Ultra, the 550 Ultra? Is your... Is your 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 cable long enough just to show people what it might look like in front inside of a case absolutely you know that kind of thing having three of those stacked up together gives you a totally different look from the rgb fans already installed in that case it's a totally different look right oh yeah and i love that you went with all black on the blades that is First really cool that is such a sweet look how do you do RGB different? Right. It is not an easy answer. No. And man, it's so hard out there with everybody going, you copied you, you copied you, you copied you. Come on, guys, chill. We're just trying to give you guys some sweet RGB. Play your games and have some fun. That's what we're all about. And I think I'm speaking for everybody. <laughs> uh, no, absolutely. I love it. You, no, <laughs> This is original, no doubt. Nobody's going to dare say... They've seen Appreciate this before because this is totally different. I really like it. Now, are those panels modular? Do they come off? Are they built? The LEDs are built into that frame, right? So you don't attach that to an existing fan. Correct. 
Correct. So this is, I mean, this is basically got your, uh, you know, standard uh, 120, 140 yeah. holes for it. Um, the one thing, I, I mean, as far as the way this is set up, I mean, when you when you look at this, it's just a, a transparent corner. I mean, it's still got the same thing, so it could mount to a radiator, mount to the, uh, you know, your bracket on your case, just the same, okay. without much of an issue. No, it, so I don't see I don't see any problems with install at all. Um, in in fact, I like the fact that with it being boxed in. You know, as far as like how this is boxed in like this, there's no air leak type of scenarios with this either. Yeah, or right. at least it's not necessarily no air leaks, but boy, does it help. Yeah. You know what I mean? From something where you'd have a fan uh, frame that wasn't fully square like that. I mean, this really does box it in and uh, it really does give that, it gives a really cool little look to this. I mean, really in any orientation, you know, you're showing it just in the front, but thinking about how this is going to look on the top or the bottom as far as different cases out there, not just with Thermaltake, but with how everybody else can uh, yeah. adapt these to some new designs. Yeah. And the software is gonna really sell this product. I think the software is gonna be more important than this fan is by itself. And I really hope that my team takes home with that. No, I, I agree. If you could get those integrated and kind of sync up a whole wall of these, you could do some really, really cool effects. Um, like front to back, rather than around and around the frame of the individual fan, just a wall of these doing a cycle of lighting. It would look awesome. Imagine, right? And then you could do kitty corner stuff. You could, I mean, what can we do with this, I guess, is more or less my question. I don't want to say we could do this and we can't, but man, it really gets the ideas going. And I, I hope you guys uh, give us some nice feedback, too, getting to uh, spend some time here with us to uh, take a look at the new Tough Fan RGBs. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Now, there's one more thing that was on my list. I wanted mm -hmm. to talk about DDR5. And uh, it's a bit of a loaded question because I want to know about Thermaltake's product. But I also want to know about availability because industry-wide, this has been a, a little bit of a... Um, a, a a song and dance, you know, Intel launched a new platform that was supposed to use DDR5 and then, oh, sorry, DDR5, you know, you can't really buy it. So I'm, I'm curious, how is Thermaltake going to time its launch given just industry-wide shortages? I mean, as far as the way industry-wide shortages go, yes, I mean, we're not looking to be first to market with this. I mean, we're not a uh, sole memory company um, out the, you know, we, we do a lot of different things. Of course, now we do memory too. DDR5 is of course a huge, huge focus for us. And uh, for example, I have this right here. The This is our uh, Tough Ram uh, XG. So we've already had this option in a DDR4. This is one of our first DDR5 samples that I have. And we're not gonna be doing too much of a change to it. I am definitely excited that we went with this design. This was one of, you know, my designs I recommended as well as far as the different options because we had the other ones with the TT on it, yeah. which is the Tough Ram RGB. Um, I like the diffusing on this as well as the additional LED count. The nice slim look looks like a nice SOP or standard for us going forward uh, with memory. And then, of course, with RGB, we're also going to be doing um, some of our RC memory, which is our non-RGB memory and uh, really trying to uh, go forward with more uh, cooling solutions too, with both the aesthetic look of the screen, as well as some uh, like top mounted cooling options uh, to help reduce the temperatures of memory. Granted, I haven't seen much with DDR5 yet. And yes, it is super early right now. Uh, with, with the way uh, Z690 has been going, I have been using that in a couple of applications, both in DDR4 and in DDR5 with Intel's 12th gen, uh, you know, big shout out to Intel for sending us some samples. And uh, we've been getting to explore and see how everything's going. I know BIOS updates has been a bit of really big deal, at least it was in December, for a lot of people trying to get certain XMP profiles to function correctly, as well as the clock speed. Yeah. I know we're gonna be doing like 4,800, I think as the lower end, and we're going up to 5,600, I believe, for the speed so far that I know. Um, I know there's others going up higher, I'm assuming we're going to be looking into that, but that announcement might not come until later. Right. No, those sound like a pretty, that sounds like a good range of speeds matching what kind of what's out there and what's available. And the kind of, uh, it's, it sounds like one of the things that makes it unique and what you've shown here is that styling. I actually haven't seen this particular module. Uh, that Do you have any of those running in like DDR4? You don't have this one kind of lit up so people can see what it looks like in a DDR4 version. Um, oh man, lit up. Well, oh yeah. 
I actually, they were in uh, the divider ultra case over here. Oh, okay. But let me get you, give you an idea of what that looks like. No problem. One sec. I really love being able to have this space now here with a lot of us, you know, in our situation we got going on. I've more or less virtualized most of my office so that we can still reach out to our customers. And we're doing weekly shows, and it's awesome, man. It's a wonderful little community to grow, and it's always glad to uh, you know, be able to show you guys this stuff, too. Because I can just interchange and switch some stuff up. Now, this right here, as you can see, was the divider, but then I have that same memory. It's the DDR4 version in there, but it lights up pretty fast. Uh, and easy, you know, as far as it normally does, it integrates in with our software. Of course, it works with all motherboard softwares out there as well. Mm -hmm. XMP profiles are super simple. Go in and enable them. Uh, been tested. We've been doing the memory for two years now, yeah. I think. A little bit over two years now. So You've um, done some pretty right. unique industrial designs for those, the, the heat sinks and the RGB. Definitely going, you know, kind of, uh, you know, fresh, Sorry. fresh, fresh designs. Definitely different from anyone else. Like, clearly thermal take. When I see that RAM, um, it's a really cool look. Yeah, just to give you guys a little bit more perspective here yeah. on the memory. Yeah, really, really sweet look. I like that. And it has not just the, the two little bars, but there's also like, I guess you'd consider it like a little diamond or a little jewel in between that yeah. also lights up. So it's considered like a third zone of RGB. So those two strips plus the centerpiece can all be set up for different addressable options and colors. Or you can just do cool little patterns and everything that we all have yeah. more or less pre-built in. They got this really neat uh, type of, to give you a little bit more of a close-up on this, it's got that little black and then this, this little cross-check uh, gray part right here. Makes it really classy, little chrome center in the middle, yeah. TT on the top. Um, definitely really like the layout as far as how this stuff uh, came out for the DDR4. And uh, super excited that this is going to be basically our, our new DDR5 option. Yeah, uh, going forward. great choice. I, I really do like the design of that. Very, very classy stuff. Brings it kind of, kind of something new to the RAM market that we haven't seen. Yeah, I mean, we're just trying to more or less, uh, you know, put our part out as far as us jumping into memory and, you know, getting involved uh, with just expanding more and more here from thermal taken. I mean, you know, I'm excited to see what we do next. Any thoughts on availability or, or you really don't have a date yet? Even like you were saying Q1 for a lot of stuff, but what about the RAM? I'm going to say RAM's probably going to be early Q2, but it could also be Q1 as well. I think a lot of that is going to determine um, more with the materials yeah. and uh, how a lot of that stuff goes out. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as, you know, support for it, and everything that should already be out there. Uh, for XMP profiles. We work with all the major guys on that, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. But that'll be done more or less before this is available. Okay, fantastic. Well, that covers a lot. You blew me away with those new Tough Fan ARGB. Uh, that oh, man, was, I'm so glad you liked them. That was exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing what my viewers think as well. And I want to thank you again, Thermal Mike, for sharing your time. And I do think that, you know, going forward, it seems like this kind of model of doing a virtual showcase is... Maybe what we're going to have to do more of um, than sitting in a big showroom, but we still get to see your fine work and all the stuff you set up. So great stuff all around. No, no, no. I appreciate it, man. I mean, thank you again so much just for spending some time with us so we can show you guys some new things virtually. Um, you know, it's, it's the best thing that we can do right now. It's the safest way. And I mean, dude, I look forward to getting back to normal and get to meet you in person. But yeah, we should definitely do this again or do this more. Uh, happy to talk anytime. Sure. And hey, do you, speaking of that, does Thermaltake have any plans about Computex? I know Computex, I think, announced they're going forward, but it seems a little, it's hard to say. Does Thermaltake know, like, do you have a, a ticket to Taiwan or do you, do you know anything no, about I it? No, I don't. Yeah. I don't think, even if it would be open and, and, you know, say for the best, it did get a lot better. I don't think something like us, at least for me, being in the U.S. region, would they would want to, you know, offer the risk of traveling that far. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I could definitely see hopefully most of this clearing up. I really hope most of this clears yeah. up this year no, we and we get past a lot of this and maybe CES next year might be uh, the, the next big one we're yeah. hoping. Okay, so maybe you'll do oh, another. We'll yeah. You might yeah, do we'll something see. virtual again for Computex then? Um, yeah, I would definitely say since with our track record that we're doing, we'll more or less probably be doing a TT Expo in the summer. Um, I've already been talking uh, with my higher ups about like, hey, man, let, you know, let's do something fun. So we're already getting some stuff down on paper to figure out a fun little show. I got some fun new ideas that I want to do, kind of change it up a little bit, keep it fresh. And we get some nice new products coming in that we got 
that we still haven't been able to show just yet, I think you guys would be really excited. Great. Well, fantastic. Well, thanks again for your time. And, um, you know, uh, hopefully a lot my, my viewers will have a lot of comments. So I'll shoot you a link to the video when it's live so you can monitor that. And, you know, until next time, thanks again, Thermal Mike. Hey, hey, thanks again so much. And hey, look forward to your guys' comments. Appreciate all the feedback. Absolutely. Okay, until next time.